So I'm a big fan of Native Script as it allows me to make native mobile applications with ease. Today we're going to look at View and Native Script. It's a relatively new addition to the front end frameworks that you can use with Native Script. So what we need to do is create a new Native Script project by first ensuring we have Native Script installed. Let's run npm install Native Script dash G and that of course will install native script globally so we can use it throughout our terminal. Next we can create a new project with TNS create and we'll call our project view NS and we'll use the template native script dash view dash template. Hit enter and of course that will install our dependencies and create the project. After that, we can CD into view NS and then run TNS, run iOS, and of course, also open this up inside of Visual Studio Codes. If we take a look at the project here on the emulator, we can see that we have a very basic app that has a few different features, such as an alert and buttons and labels being displayed on screen. We're going to create our own application that's going to display a list view and of course get some data from a REST endpoint. So we'll head over to app.js and this is of course the main entry point for our application. I'll start off by deleting the entire file because we want to create this from scratch. We'll then require view, so let's say const view is equal to require native script dash view and we want to get that from dist and index. We can then create a new view instance and our view instance can have a template and this will be a very basic template that simply has a page and an action bar. We'll give the action bar a title of users as this will simply display a list of users. In order to bootstrap our application we'll need to say dot dollar start on our view instance. I'm then going to define some data and the data will be a basic users array and inside of that users array we might have something like an ID, a name, a username and a potential email address. We'd then be able to take this and display this on screen with a stack layout and a list view. So let's add a stack layout to our template. And inside of our stack layout, we'll add a list view. The list view will have a template and we'll scope our template at user. This will allow us to get a reference of the current item in which we will bind the items inside of the list view using colon items. That will allow us to get access to the user's array which then, of course, will be able to say user.name, user.username, and so on. So here we have a very simple stack layout once again. And inside of the stack layout, we can have some labels. We can bind to the text input on the label. So user.name, user.username, and finally user.email. If we save our project, you can see that we now have a list view with some items on screen. We can make our list view take up 100% of the width by simply saying list dash view and the height of which will be 100 view height. I'm also going to give our stack layout a class of list and for that class we will simply give that a margin of 20 pixels. That looks much better. What I want to do now is access HTTP so we can get some data from our REST API. Let's head over to our view instance and define some methods. Inside of methods, we can make a get data function. And inside of here, we need to access HTTP. So, Let's require HTTP from HTTP and we can also add a view instance property. So let's add a view dot prototype dot dollar HTTP equal to the HTTP that we just required. 
We can then say this dollar HTTP, and then we can use get JSON, and we'll pass through HTTPS JSON placeholder dot type dot com slash users. And this will give us a response in which we can say then capture our response and we'll set our users equal to the response dot map and this will map over our response and we can craft a user object by returning a name equal to user dot name username equal to user dot username and finally an email equal to user dot email. So now we have a method that allows us to get some data from the server. But how do we call that method when our application is created? Well, we can hook into the created lifecycle hook. Inside of here, we can then say this dot get data. I'm gonna go back to app.css and change this to 100% height instead of view height. And I'm also going to add code.dark.css instead of the light theme. Then inside of our app.js, we can add the action bar class to our action bar. And if we take a look at our application, we have an application which we can scroll up and down that has communicated with a REST API and uses native script view. This video has a corresponding blog post over at blog.paulhalliday.io. Don't forget to check that out if you want to see more information or just as a reference point. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more native script and view content. Let me also know inside of the comment section what you think. And until next time, my name is Paul and I'll see you very soon in that next video.